Look right there. There's fish on the outside of this grass. And look at that. Them Guggen Squad channel don't teach you nothing about that. There's a grass line with fish on the outside of it. There's a grass line fish on the outside of it. There we go. Good one too, son. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today is, uh, yeah, today's been actually a pain in, in my butt. Um, let's just start back over with this morning and I'll just show you guys what happened this morning. What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dairy and It's Fishing. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. If you've been liking all of my content, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Today I'm gonna be cranking out an awesome video. I'm going to a lake that I haven't been to are you kidding me? Maybe I'm not. These damn batteries have not been charging. Well, I've been having some trouble with my charger the last couple days. And for whatever reason, this light is not coming on, which normally means that there's a fuse blown um on the charger itself but there's not a fuse blown and it's not disconnected i had this happen one other time but the, the thing was unconnected like this was like it, the, the it was pulled apart like that but it's how it's supposed to be that's what i don't understand we got two out of three cranking i mean uh trolling motor batteries are charged i booked that 66 percent and in my book that's a passing grade a d i think i think a high d is a passing grade we're gonna just go with it. I'm driving an hour away to risk it. Probably should not drive an hour away. All right, guys, I'll see you at the lake here in just a few seconds. All right, guys, well, to start off this magnificent day, I drove all the way to Neely Henry and my trolling motor batteries are dead. We got one dead battery, which is preventing all of my other batteries from working. So that's always fun, drive an hour to a lake and you know, nothing's working, what you want. But I do have just enough juice that like every now and then it turns off. So what I'm gonna do is swim my jig until there's no, absolutely no swimming my jig left. A few moments later. Well, that didn't last very long at all. My, my stuff's completely dead now. So I'm not even gonna put the trolling motor down. I'm just gonna use my power poles and the big motor, I guess, for the rest of the day. We're looking back, I realized that I should have just stayed home then, but I drove all the way to the lake and about an hour away and my battery, my troll motor battery would not work. Uh, long story short, I'm not gonna call different businesses out who really suck at doing their job, but let's just say that there was a company a business, a place that, that you guys should be going to get services done with. They didn't want to help me at all, so I called one of their competitors. They instantly helped me. I'm not going to even talk anymore about it, but I'll just say that I did get help on my situation. It was not from who I thought would help me, but we got help. We're out here on the water. It's it's a lot. It's a, it's much longer of a, of a day. It's been a lot longer of a day than what I wanted it to be, but I can promise you one thing. I'm excited to go fishing. It is 4.54 p.m. I don't even know what time it gets dark. The sun is right there. And all I know is once it gets down there, I won't be able to fish anymore. It'll be too dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to film a little bit of a zibanga for you guys. I have no clue what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna go looking, maybe drag that worm around again that I forgot to blur out. I totally did not do that on purpose. I completely was not supposed to show that worm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my last video. But yeah, I was not supposed to uh, forget to blur that worm out on the second part of it, but I did. If you guys are new to my channel, make sure you go hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, turn on that notification bell, and uh, yeah, you'll hopefully get to see a lot of my videos. But done talking, I'll see you guys on the chesty in a few seconds. <sighs> All right, so we're obviously out here. As you guys can see on the graph, 
we're in nine feet, we're fishing grass that is growing up to four feet. Just fishing a hump. And I'm dragging my worm through the grass. As old school, as basic as you can get. I'm just wondering if there's any fish out here. I've checked about every freaking place they can be right now, so I don't know why else they wouldn't be out here. But with my luck, hell, they probably won't be out here either. So this is just a hump, although it looks gigantic out here. There's several humps in this area and they're all pretty good. No real, there's some sweet spots on a couple of them, but for the most part, you can just go fishing, pull up on one as long as there's grass. You're not gonna be able to graft these fish, you're just gonna fish for them. And when you get in an area where you catch a couple fish, you just keep making that same cast. And that is about as easy as it is. Sometimes it takes you a little while, but it's not necessarily the hardest fishing. Oh, I got one right here. Oh, he came off. it. He ate my ass up too, boy. Man, that felt, I mean, obviously you can't tell by the bite, but. That was my second cast out here too. I don't know how in the heck I missed him, to be dead honest. Normally you don't miss them on a worm. Or confidence bait, I think, for me on this lake, probably gonna be a big worm. If I had to just pick one thing, I mean, you can drag it, you can drag it in the grass on a Texas rig. You can fish it around boat docks. You can fish it around the bank. You can fish around the bridges. You can fish it out deep on ledges. I mean, a big worm is just hard, hard to beat. And don't, and they're never gonna be too big. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna have a, a worm that's too big. I, we used to throw a 15 inch worm they sold at Walmart here. And we used to catch, catch the daylight and piss out of them on that thing. As y'all can see right here, I'm in the dead middle of it where the grass hasn't started yet. And I'm just throwing up to where the grass is. And there's nothing special about what I'm doing. I'm just making sure I got a good feel. All right, now I'm moving up on it a little bit more. Well, they weren't on the outside, so now I'm gonna get a little bit closer where it's just a hair thicker. Get up a little bit shallower, just see what's going on up here. There we go. Good one too, son. Let's go. Golly. Oh, mad sucker. There we go. That's how you want him to eat it. He freaking just choked it too. Like he hit it and took off. Like I couldn't do nothing. It's that new secret worm, boy. <laughs> Oh man, there we go. Pretty one. Oh, he's bleeding like crazy. Get back, buddy. There we go, dance for me. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I did not feel him bite it. But I'm gonna throw it right back on where he was. Let's see if I can't catch me another. There's one. God, bit my worm right in half. That ain't what you want. Look right there. There's fish on the outside of this grass and there's fish on the inside. Look at that. Them Guggen Squad channel don't teach you nothing about that. There's a grass line with fish on the outside of it. There's a grass line fish on the outside of it. That's why you drag a worm. Y'all go subscribe because y'all don't get to learn all that kind of stuff like that on the Guggen Squad channel. They got more subs, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. You don't get to learn about fishing grass lines on the Guggen Squad channel. Now, I turned and I threw straight behind, right just where I was. I'm still marking more out here off the side. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put a waypoint right where 
that spot was. Now, on this deal, I know that this right in front of me, right where I'm throwing towards. So this cast right there, I should be landing on them. I'm marking some more off here off the deep end of this sucker. We finna mess them up, boys and girls. God. There we go. That's a good one. That was tight. Didn't want to set the hook when that guy drove by, but he didn't give me no choice. I could tell he was down in some grass because when I set the hook, it felt heavy. And then I felt it broke free or I felt it break free. And as soon as it broke free, he came out of the grass. He came out of the water flying. He choked it, I know that. Actually, that's, that's the most over, that's that most over said thing in fishing. Oh wait, I gotta quit saying, I gotta quit saying that. That's annoying. He choked it now. I, I know one thing, he, they freaking choked it. I will, I will never quit saying that, I don't even know why. I don't know, I thought I would quit saying that, I never will. And then you got this guy right here. He says, I don't give a rip what y'all fishing. I'm running this boat right over the top of this sucker. Piss on y'all. He just ran through one foot. What up, Ski Nauti? One more thing we about to do. I'm off the side of this hump and I keep seeing fish a little bit deeper than what, uh, what I need to be seeing them. This ain't really a ledge, but, well, this definitely ain't a ledge, it's just a hump. These fish are sitting way too deep for my comfort off the edge of that hump. So I'm gonna do just as any other smart man would do and I'm gonna keep them honest. That right there is the color I want for this little bit muddier water. All right, that crankbait's running way right. So I'm gonna hold this bait looking straight at me. I'm gonna grab the pliers on it just like this. And I'm gonna turn it just a very little bit left. It's still hanging a little bit right. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. And that's how you do it. It just takes a little bit of a turn, guys. Don't, do not overturn that crankbait. You don't need to twist it that much. Where the split ring connects to the bait, that metal ring on the lip, and if it's running to, if the bait, if you're, when you're reeling your bait in, if it's running to the right, like if you're watching your bait run to the right, then you're gonna put your pliers, lay them flat on the bill of the bait, go to the, where that metal ring is, and then you're gonna twist in this motion so that you're, you're just bending that thing over to the left, like that. Uh, it's, it kind of looks like I'm twisting to the right, but push it that way. If it's going to the left, push it that way. And you're just giving the very tip of that thing and just barely bending it the direction that you want it to go. I mean, I done messed up and found a gigantic school. Look at this. Look at all them dots. And there's dots on my, every now and then when I, watch this, when I turn this pan optics around. Look at that. That's a lot of freaking fish right there. I can't get my pan optics to show it. There they are. Look at pan optics. Look at them swimming. Jesus, if I can get down to them, we might get right. I think that'd be grass. I think I threw significantly Too shallow. Man, I feel like I'm pulling something up. I got an anchor. Oh God, I can't wait to clickbait this. These people are gonna get so damn mad at me. But this is not clickbait. This is called getting you to watch the video on something that's real. But watch, watch this. Y'all remember that juicy thumbnail? This is, uh, that's probably a seven pound piece of a cinder block. So, I'm gonna say giant, I caught a giant. Cause this is big, I mean this is huge. Something, I don't know. I'll clickbait this somehow, but 
Y'all probably be like, clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. I was hoping it was gonna be an anchor that said t the word 10 pounds on it, or the numbers 10 pounds on it, because then I could have said, deep cranking, double digit bass. Then y'all really, or not double digit bass, deep cranking, double digits. Then y'all would have lost y'all's damn mind. All right, now I just threw back on those fish that I saw on the grass line. I got sidetracked for a second with those fish that I saw out deep. But I should be right on the grass line right now. Hmm, there's another one. God. They're just not eating it good. You never miss this many on a big worm. That's my favorite thing about it. That's why I th that's why I'm so confident in it. Is you don't one you don't lose them when you set the hook ever. Like you never have them throw a big worm. The only reason you break off on a big worm is because you are dragging it around rocks or or you know or shells or something. But you never you never have one throw this bait and they hold on to it for so long. I just need to let them eat it a little bit longer because I've missed a couple of them. Normally, especially on this like they do not care about this big worm. They'll they'll eat it instantly and have the whole thing down their throat. I just need to let, they're not eating good today. I need to let them have it a little bit longer. Oh, there we go. God, man. I do not know why in the heck I can't stick these fish. I wonder if I got any more hooks. I don't think I got any in my dang boat. There we go. Finally, been missing them like crazy, man. This little fat chunk. Oh, how about that? As soon as I opened that hook up, because I, I was missing them, and I opened that hook up just a little bit, and the first bite I got, because I didn't miss like, I've probably missed five today. As soon as I open that hook up, just a little bit, for whatever reason, I have no clue, but I opened that hook up and the first bite I got choked it. I mean, I had them completely pegged. I have no clue why. Sometimes that, I mean, I've done it before though. Sometimes when they're not eat, when, when you're not hitting them, when you're not hooking them and you know that they're biting, like I, in my opinion, you don't just miss them. Like it, something happened wrong because it, most of the time they don't just, half-ass bite it like if they got it and they're swimming with it or they got it you're not gonna miss them a lot of times when it's like that though i'll change color first like i think maybe they're not eating this color good and especially this particular color because i would not be throwing green pumpkin on a day like this especially with this watercolor for whatever reason i only have green pumpkin so that's all i can throw y'all can see with this worm i'm not just doing a straight pull reel up your slack pull reel up your slack I'm, I'm pulling it, but like in the middle of a pull, I hop it a couple times just to give that worm a little bit more action, that tail. I don't exactly know what all I can talk about about this worm, but um, it does have a lot of action, but you have to kind of give the bait the action. And so it's, it's kind of like, it's weird. It's kind of subtle, but you can give it action. Like it, it wants to be subtle, but you can make it have action. Now with that bait, just barely hop up out of the grass and that's when they're biting it every single time. It's like on the fall, they can't, they just immediately grab it on the fall. There we go, another one. All males. All little bitty males, but. I'll take it, cause soon their uh, female counterparts will be out here. Hey, and by the way, Y'all saw where he was just hooked at? 
that was the second bite I've had since I opened that hook up and I haven't missed one yet. That's gonna wrap up today's video. It's been an absolute long freaking day, uh, but I had a lot of fun, I'll be honest. I learned something this morning, which is if you see something that's wrong, take a little bit extra time. Don't just rush it. Figure out what the problem is and figure out if it's worth it to continue. Like in my situation this morning, I could have saved a lot of time, a lot of gas money, a lot of money, a lot of frustration if I just didn't go to Neely Henry this morning. Just stay home, go to the boat dealership, get my thing looked at. I would have been fishing out here six more hours than what I did. But anyhow, it was a lot of fun. I learned something. I learned something today. I haven't been catching a lot of fish out here. Uh, I think they're moved out to these humps. These humps are shallow. I'm, I can power pull down right here. It's, uh, well, my grass are off. It's like three foot where I'm sitting at, but there's no boats around. There's no anything around. Uh, it's just a hump. There's a lot of humps out here. And so what I'm doing, I'm dragging this worm. I don't even know if I can show you all this worm yet. Uh, I'm going to have to call and get permission to do the rest of this part of this video. But I wanted to show you, if I can show you, then I'll go ahead and show you the worm because I already leaked it once. This is the worm. It doesn't even have a name yet, but you can see it's got a... Uh, honestly, I did not mean to leak it the other day, but the worm is kind of... Uh, it's kind of wide. This one's been eaten up, by the way, so this is not probably not the prettiest one to show you. But you can see it's kind of wide if you look at it, but it's thin this way, so it's kind of shaped like an oval. Um, it's got those ridges down the body, and then the tail is dead flat. It's like just straight flat. There's no, uh, look at that, just dead flat. They don't have a name for this worm yet, but this is going to be a absolute beast worm um, out deep up shallow swimming in the grass it's going to be a great stand-up head worm i think it's going to be really really good for that and i'm just excited to throw it. i'm throwing it on a texas rig this is a seven foot medium heavy rod 15 pound line a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio reel and then i've got my this is one thing that is important that I wanted to show you guys because I know a lot of you have been asking questions about this, but you can see I've got my bobber stop up here by my hand. It's above the weight. That way, when you're fishing it, the weight doesn't just slide down. Look, it doesn't just slide down. That bobber stop is actually catching the weight. And I've got my hook and the worm. And let me show you something. When you have a Texas rig, especially if you're fishing around cover, you want this thing to be rigged dead straight from the hook, from the from the weight all the way down past where the hook is, you want the body of it to be straight up and down, just like that. Well, you can see it's kind of got a little bend there in the middle, but make sure it's straight. It, that, that serves so many purposes. The action of the bait is one of the main things. The hookup ratio is another thing. And what happens if, is if you don't have that bait on straight. All right, so when you got it rigged like this and it's perfectly straight, when you go to set the hook and it's like this, the bait presses down and the hook point exposes like that. And then that is what hooks the fish. The problem is if you rig a Texas rig the wrong way, you'll notice that you 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 hit the fish. Like today, I just wasn't even hitting them. I was just missing them. But you, what you'll notice is you feel them for a second and then they come off. What happens is if you rig the worm and you have something that looks like this, which I've seen a lot of you do, so you know make sure you're doing it the right way or even like this where your where your hook is kind of coming out like that you can kind of see that when you go to set the hook this is what happens the fish bites you swing and then the bait pulls off of this part right here instead of the hook point back here that is what you do not want you want the front to be pinned, this part to be tucked up in the bait so that when you swing, that exposes. That hook point right there exposes. So that's what you want. So make sure your Texas rigs are rigged up perfectly square, perfectly straight. Um, if you mess one up, if you tear the worm, don't force it, just get a new worm. I like a four-aught hook 90% of the time. I'm throwing a smaller bait, I'll throw a, four, a three aught. And then a lot of times out on gunner swell, I'll throw a five aught hook uh, on a Texas rig. Just it like, like honestly, I wish I had a five aught hook. I think I would have caught some of those fish today. That's a four aught. It's just a little bit smaller, but anyhow, I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a very trying day, but it was, it was fun, honestly. Um, I now am excited that I figured out these that there's some fish out here. So uh, I'm gonna come back out tomorrow. I'm gonna have some more worms. I won't throw that one probably because the water's a little bit muddy. I feel like I would have caught a lot more fish today if I would have had a brighter, well, I'm sorry, not a brighter, but a darker color that kind of contrasts better in this muddy water, like a June bug um, or a black would have been my go-tos for today. So I've got some old monsters. I've got some 
big net bait worms I'm going to bring tomorrow. Hopefully they'll they'll bite it. I think they will. Uh, so me and Hannah will come out, bring Coco, and uh, I can't wait, man. I'm super excited. I can't thank you guys enough. My channel has been growing, man. It's been growing like crazy, and. I just can't I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate that me and Hannah as I said in one of my other videos we're, we're moving our house we close May the 15th and we're moving we're gonna be in Gunnersville for a little while and sorry they just came up schooling uh, we're gonna be in Gunnersville for a little while and then we're moving back home towards our to where our family is just because we're gonna start having me and Hannah want to start having a family having kids and um, just move back home get closer to the family I'm still gonna fish out here a lot a lot of you said you're sad because you're seeing me leave I'm not leaving I'll still be here every week I just won't be here every single day like normally I fish every day at, at least a couple hours every single day I'll go back to once a week I'll still fish at home because we're moving on a lake it's just a much smaller lake like. but um, anyhow I appreciate the support I appreciate all you guys being here for me um, and also the Saturday Night Lives I want to get a name for those so y'all be thinking about what we should name Saturday Night Live make it a little bit more professional maybe do it uh, every week and save them so y'all can go back and listen to them. I know a lot of you have been listening to them uh, after they're done so anyhow I hope you guys enjoyed this video if, if you haven't already please smash the subscribe button go smash that thumbs up button go smash the subscribe button again Turn on the notification bell. And I'm giving away, don't forget, I've got a couple giveaways going on. Um, one for a lure locker, full set of these. You gotta buy anything from lurelock.com. Use my code DC20 when you check out. Screenshot your order, email it to me or DM it to me, um, and you'll be able to win. All the instructions for that will be in the description box below. I'm also giving away a six cents six sack well not a six sack but a sack of lures like this uh, with all six cents plastics in there and i'm going to pick one person and uh, select to give this sack of baits to it's uh, it's going to be really awesome gives you the opportunity to try some of these six cents soft plastics these are really really good and then one day i'll be able to give you guys that new worm but not right now so anyhow hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you all on the next one